What's good, guys? We're back at it again with another video. As you see from the title today, we're going to be talking about love and basketball and some tips that you guys can use when you actually start to lose that love of the game. I'm making this video, for, you know, for that player who, let's just say, you know, tryouts are coming up or maybe you just had tryouts and you didn't make the team or maybe you've been working out, playing on all these teams, playing in front of all these coaches and you haven't got that offer. Maybe you're already on a team, but you're not getting a lot of minutes and you feel like, oh, man, like I'm just ready to quit. Like maybe this isn't for me. Or maybe you're in practice and there's a coach that singles you out every single time and it feels like he's taking the love of the game from you. Maybe you're in conditioning and you're like, man, I can't do this anymore. Like, this is too hard. If this is what it takes to get to that next level, I'm not sure if I really want to do this. I wanted to make this video for players like that because guess what? I was one of those players all the way up until college. I was one of those players and I didn't have a lot of people talk to me about what can I do when... I just don't feel like working out or I just don't feel like that passion, that hunger behind basketball is there. That's what I want to talk to you guys about. Let's get into it. I want to start this out by debunking the whole notion that basketball players or athletes in general have to be in love with their sport 24-7 in order to get to the next level, in order to get to their goals. Because I want you guys to think about it like this. When you think of the word love or when you've seen it on TV or when you've seen it you know, in entertainment, it's kind of sensationalized, right? They talk about it like, oh, I'm in love with this person 24-7. We never argue. Like, we want to be around each other all the time. Like, that's what love is. But if you go talk to a married couple or a family, they will tell you about how many times, you know, they get into disagreements, that they don't like each other, that they don't want to be around each other. They don't want anything to do with that other person, but they still love each other because that is the realistic look at love. But when you bring that to basketball, you have a lot of times where, you know, as a player, you don't want to go work out. You don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to go run. You don't want to go, you know, dribble around your neighborhood, go outside and play. You just want to chill inside, right? And as a coach, as a parent, you see that in that player and you instantly tell that player, like, you don't want it. Like, you don't really want this. You don't really want to be great. Like, obviously, it's not for you. So what that player internalizes is, man, all the greatest basketball players, you know, must love to play basketball every single second of the day. And since I don't really love to play, you know, it must not be for me. Like, obviously, I'm not a good basketball player. Like, I can't reach my goals. I can't get to college. I can't become a starter on varsity because I don't have that that feeling inside that I want to play 24-7. And I'm here to tell you guys this. Me, Brian Thomas II, finished high school with 17 full-ride Division One scholarship offers, was a D1 starter at two different schools. And I'm here to tell you that as a player throughout my playing career, there have been numerous, countless, I don't know how many times where I didn't feel like working out. I didn't feel like practicing. I felt like a coach was going at me so hard that I just wanted to quit basketball like I was done. Or obviously, I've told you guys before, I thought I should have got an offer. I didn't have it and I was ready to quit. And I just think that a lot of players, you see all the extremely talented players that are at the top. They're getting these scholarship offers. They might be starters on varsity and you want to be a starter. And, you know, you see all the success that they have and it makes you think that because all you've been told is, oh, all the best players want to play 24-7. It makes you think that those players never have doubts. It makes you think that those players have never had a point in time where they wanted to quit, where they felt like basketball wasn't for them. For me, I can take you through some of these times. When I used to train with Jeremy Lamb's dad on Sundays at a Carver College in Atlanta, and I used to wake up that morning and tell my dad, like, yeah, call him and tell him I'm sick. Like, I really, I'm not really feeling it today. And my dad literally used to tell me verbatim, like, I don't know how you think you're supposed to get to college. You don't, you're not showing any passion. You're not showing any hunger. And I'm just telling him I'm not feeling it today. And what I was thinking at that time was he might be right. I guess, I guess I'm not a college basketball player. Or when we talk about coaches, when I was missing layups, like my freshman year, maybe of high school, and my coach put a chair right in the middle of the court, and I had to sit in the chair while my teammates were running lines back and forth, and they looking at me crazy, like, man, you really got us running. Or when a coach would stop practice, like I said, and tell me, you know, oh, you're going to be a UPS driver, like you're not showing no drive, no passion. And everything that I was hearing at that time was telling me, like, Maybe I'm not like maybe I'm supposed to be in love with this 24 seven. And since I'm not, it's not for me. That's a lot. It's a lot for all of you players out there. And I know there's a lot of players out there because I get the messages. Maybe you're in high school, like I said in the beginning. And, you know, you didn't make the team or, you know, you made the team, but you don't get a lot of minutes or you maybe you're a senior. You don't have your offers yet. And you're really just at the point in your career where you don't feel like working out. You don't feel like doing anything. I'm here to tell you guys that that is a normal feeling. That is a normal feeling. Anyone who has ever did anything successful in life, whether it's in sports, business, entertainment, whatever, 
They have had that moment where they didn't feel that fire, that hunger inside of them to do what they do every single day. They won't tell you that and a lot of people don't really publicize that because they think it makes them look weaker or that they're not that serious about their craft. But no, doubts, feeling that drive, that hunger, that passion subside a little bit, it's a natural feeling. But there are certain things that you can do when that passion, when that drive kind of subsides, when you feel like you don't feel like doing it, there are certain things that you can do in order to get past that because if you can get past that, I've told you guys before, some of the greatest things that you want in life are just past that hard part or just past that part where you literally feel like quitting. And I want to go over a couple of those with you. So for me in high school, when I had those days when I didn't feel like working out, when I was feeling lazy, when I didn't have the love of the game, like I really just didn't feel like doing anything. I was just trying to stay home, play video games, watch TV. The thing that would help me end up getting up and go work out, go to the gym is competitiveness. Because guess what? Even if I don't really, I feel like I don't really love basketball right now, because remember, love isn't just a consistent, you feel like you in love with something all the time. No, it is ups and downs. It is ups and downs. But the thing is, you stay there. You don't run away. It's going to be ups and downs. You still stay the path. You still stay the course. One of the things I would think about is there's this player, Cole Roberts, that played at Riverwood. This is a big who was shorter than me, less athletic than me. But one thing he did have was an insane motor and dude was kind of swollen at the time in high school. I'm skinny. So on those days when I would be thinking like, man, like I don't really, you know, I don't really feel like it. I don't really like it right now. I would think about him and I'd be like, hold on. I don't care how I feel right now. I don't care how I feel because that's another thing. Feelings are temporary. Feelings will go away. You might feel tired. You might feel like you don't like it right now. But I promise you it will come back because feelings are temporary. But I would just think about him and I just think about, wait a second. I know I'm being lazy. I might not like it. But guess what? If I'm chilling right now, I bet you he's not chilling. And I bet you when we step on the court and I got to play that dude, I know how competitive I was when I played against him because our coach would always talk to us about his motor and always talk to me about you need to play like him. I was just thinking about him and be like, Man, I know I know when he steps on that court, he's going to be ready to go regardless of if I love the game or not. So guess what? I better get up. I better get up and go work out. Otherwise, when I step on the court, I'm going to be embarrassed because he will fry me. He will cook me. And all of a sudden, I'm up to hear from my coach again. You need to be playing like him. Like you see what he did tonight? I did not want that to happen at all. And some people say it's not good to have external you know, reasons to go, reasons to go work out. But when you're in those situations where you really feel like quitting and you really don't feel like doing anything, sometimes it takes that little external person to get you revved up, to get you back into it, to really get you back working out. Another tactic that I would use to kind of reinvigorate that passion inside myself was to think back to that little kid, that little kid in second and third grade who literally had his entire basketball outfit like set out the night before his first basketball practice. Like, I'll never forget that. I literally had it. It was like a red and black Jordan shirt, all red, bright red shorts and like some team Jordans or something like that. But of course, I didn't realize there were team Jordans at the time. But I was so excited that night before just to finally be able to go to my first basketball practice and be on a team and just be able to play. And that kid back then had dreams of, of course, playing in the NBA, but it really was dreams of playing at a high level, being around extremely talented players and playing on TV. So when I was in high school and I got to that point where it got hard and I was tired and I wasn't seeing the results right away and I was just ready to quit and I just felt like I didn't really love it anymore. I would think back to that kid and I would think back to all the hours and all those times I would be playing outside and just having those dreams of goals that I wanted to achieve. And by visualizing that and trying to put myself in the shoes of that little kid again, who really was in love with the game and really just couldn't wait to go play, by visualizing that, all of a sudden I started to feel like I wanted to work out again. Last thing I wanna leave you guys with is, and I've said it on this channel before, when you lose your passion, when you lose your drive, when you don't feel like you wanna do something, discipline and repetition will bring that back. Just like I said in the beginning, anyone and everybody who's ever been successful has had days where they didn't want to focus on their craft, where they just wanted to lay down and do nothing, but they understood that having the discipline to tell your mind, to tell your mind, to have control of your mind and to tell yourself, I don't care. I'm going to get up and work out and doing that repeatedly all of a sudden builds a habit in you. And I've talked about it before. It's like muscle memory. If you build a routine of discipline within yourself that I don't care how I feel when school's over, I'm going to shoot this many jump shots 
or before school, I'm going to shoot this many jump shots, or I'm going to go outside and work on my handle. I'm going to go in the garage, go in the backyard, work on my handle. If you build that level of discipline in yourself, it will become a habit and it won't matter because it'll be a part of you. I saw this quote that Arnold Schwarzenegger said, he was asked on a podcast, like, you know, why do you still work out? Like, you're so old. Why do you still work out? You know what his answer was? I ate breakfast when I was a little kid. I still eat breakfast now. Why? You know what I'm saying? I took a shower when I was a little kid. I still take showers now. Why? Because it's a part of my daily routine. It's a part of me. It's something I do every single day. And I think that that mindset is something that separates a lot of successful people from everybody else is they get to a point where they're crap, whatever they're working towards, whatever their goal is that they're working towards. They've gotten it to a point that it is something that you will work on. Think about every single day. Why? because it's just a part of my habit. I don't care how I feel because I can feel really happy this day and I can feel really sad another day. I can be angry this day, you know what I'm saying? I can be really tired another day. It doesn't matter. I have the self-discipline and I'm going to continue to repeat the same actions, make little bits of progress every single day until one day I'll look back and be like, hold on, I've gotten this far and I've achieved my goal. I just really want you guys to understand that you're going to have feelings and you're gonna have days where you don't wanna work out, when you don't wanna get better, where you feel like basketball isn't for you, where you feel like you don't really love the game anymore. But I just want you guys to understand that those feelings are temporary. If you are willing to put those aside and use some of the tips that I talk about or use some of your own in order to reinvigorate that drive, that hunger, that passion within you, to reinvigorate that love for the game again, I'm telling you, if you can get through those tough periods where you don't really want to do it, what you want is right on the other side. I'm a living testimony of it. I was ready to quit one week. Literally had all my stuff ready, brought it to my AAU director, told him I was going to quit. He convinced me to just give him a little bit more time. I ended up with 17 offers. I'm going to leave you all with that. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations or the breakdowns that go on the channel, hit my website in the description. Also, if you have any questions for me or need any advice, hit my link for Noodle in the description. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time with the next video.